report this week about Stephen Miller, who is the president's point person on immigration. In fact, to the extent that he is, he's kind of run roughshod over DHS as an independent agency or an agency that, that functions. Um, he, there are about 700 emails of his leaked in which he's <coughs> cultivating a Breitbart reporter and pushing white nationalist <coughs> themes that immigrants are uh, criminal and he's recommending racist books. You've called for him to resign. You started a petition. Why? If we have a white nationalist at the helm of U.S. For, of U.S. immigration policy, it means that U.S. immigration policy will become increasingly more fascistic, and we cannot allow that to be us. And so long as Stephen Miller is in charge of U.S. immigration policy, hundreds of thousands of people's lives are going to be in danger. Over 70 or around 70,000 migrant children have been detained and including child separation, including horrific conditions, including, um, including young children who have died in U.S. custody. This is not normal. And when we have, I mean, it's, it's, it's not. We have AOC here. She's speaking about Stephen Miller, and she's using what I call the left's favorite pitch line. White nationalist, right? Racism. They're playing the color game as usual. What's going on with AOC and why is she so adamant about uh, Stephen Miller and his resignation? Well, let's, let's go into some background. I, I looked at a video mm -hmm. the other day, and, and I hope I can get this over to you, Jermaine, so you can play it for your listeners. This is important. It's a video that shows quotes in speeches from television by Barack Obama, last president of the United States, Chuck Schumer, the Senate Democratic leader, Nancy Pelosi, the House Majority Leader, and a large number of other Democrats. Every single speech, and it starts with Bill Clinton, goes to Hillary Clinton, then Barack Obama, then these other senators and congresspeople. They are all talking about the fact that illegal immigration, which is crossing the border without permission into the United States, is a federal crime. And the protection of our borders is the bedrock of national sovereignty. In other words, the United States without a border is not the United States, it's just territory. Every one of the people I just named campaigned, and I mean this literally, these are all Democrats, liberals, all campaigned on the promise to shut down illegal immigration. Now, mm -mm -mm. what's happened? Well, Donald Trump got elected, and one of his primary campaign promises, going back to 2015 and then 16, was let's protect the borders and let's just let in people that are legally doing the paperwork. The Democrats figured out that's a great way to attack Donald Trump. So anybody that doesn't want open borders is dot, 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 fill in the blank. What's the worst thing you can call somebody? Well, you can call them a Nazi which doesn't really work for Stephen Miller because, well, he's Jewish. <laughs> That's what I'm about to say. <laughs> so that doesn't make any sense, right? So what's the second worst thing you can call somebody? Well, a white nationalist. Now, keep in mind, white nationalists hate Jews, mm -hmm. Latinos, blacks, immigrants, Catholics. I mean, the list of people they hate is much longer than the people they like. However, it sounds really bad, so let's call Stephen Miller a white nationalist. Now keep in mind, this is important. In that commentary by AOC where she talked about Steve Miller is a white nationalist, she talks about locking up children in cages, separating children from families, and locking them up at the borders, everybody. Jermaine, I hope your listeners listen very carefully. The laws that are being enforced at the border by ICE, 
Border Patrol, etc., were passed during the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. Those pictures that circulate of children in cages were taken when Barack Obama was President of the United States. The laws regarding immigration are not set by President Trump, certainly not by Stephen Miller, who is an advisor to President Trump. They're set by the United States Congress, who has the exclusive right to affect immigration policy in the United States. So what's happened is the following, and this is really a scandal, I think. Democrats have figured out that if hordes of illegals come into the United States and the Democrat Party can figure out how to register them, something like 80 or 90 percent of them will vote Democrat. So if you want to gain power, retain power, and control to the exclusion of any other party, in other words, have a super majority where you can pass anything that you want and the other side can't filibuster even to stop you, well, open the borders, take down the walls, open the fences. Now what's ironic, this is the great irony going into the 2020 election, when people like AOC call Stephen Miller a white nationalist, these are the same people, Schumer and Pelosi and so on, who live behind walls. Mm -hmm. The pictures are on the internet, Jermaine. I'm not making this up. <laughs> Please, Google Chuck Schumer's house. Google Nancy Pelosi's house and so on. They live behind walls. In other words, walls at their house are great. Why? keeps out the people they don't want climbing in their windows. Walls at the border are racist, Nazi, and white supremacist kind of stuff. So if you want to keep out MS-13 and the cartels and the human traffickers and the drug dealers and the terrorists from the Middle East, all of which are coming across our border every day, and it's not a theory, it's provable, open the borders up. They'll come across along with thousands and thousands of other people who are going to vote for you in the next election. So AOC calling Stephen Miller a white nationalist and suggesting that he wants white genocide, I think that means whites kill everyone who's not white, I think. And that because he doesn't want all the statues of American heroes of the last 200 years torn down, then he obviously supports terror against blacks, I guess, that resonates with the uninformed. Mm -hmm. Let me comment on the statues. Especially in the South, and I've been all over the South, there are statues of Confederate war heroes, there are statues of American presidents from 200 years and 150 years ago and 100 years ago and generals and so on. It's our history. And each one of those statues is a teaching moment. Some of the people were fantastic, Abraham Lincoln. Some of the people were semi-fantastic, Ulysses Grant. Some of them were, well, a little bit questionable. Thomas Jefferson, he had slaves, but he wrote the greatest document in American history, the Declaration of Independence. We can learn from all of that. Denying our history and whitewashing things, I don't mean that white people-ish, but whitewashing in the traditional sense of the word, erases our history, erases our culture, and separates us from what we are today based on where we came from before. People like AOC, in my opinion, hate America. Mm -hmm. They truly do. They hate you, they hate me, because we're for freedom, and we're for capitalism, and we're for independence, and we're for, well, self-reliance. People like her, well, I don't want billions of dollars coming into my district from Amazon because Amazon is a capitalist co uh, company. I would rather have my people go hungry and without jobs, and that's the way she thinks. And like the two previous people that you talked about with me, Rashida Tlaib and um, Ilhan Omar, AOC's got a big problem coming up in her district. Mm -hmm. Why? 
there's a lot of people that were counting on those Amazon jobs. The tax base was going to go to the moon. Amazon was going to invest, not a joke, over a billion dollars. People were going to make Get this, Jermaine, the average job I heard was $115,000 a year, mm. and they had 10,000 people wanting those jobs, Jermaine, and single-handedly, AOC killed it. Now, in fairness, look at her background. She worked at Hot Dog on a Stick. <laughs> yeah. I used to love Hot Dog on a Stick when I was in high school because you could get a hot dog and a lemonade, for like a dollar ninety-five, but she got fired because she wasn't very good at it. Then she went to college and did a bunch of videos where she was drunk and posted videos, and then she was a bartender. That's her background, okay? And she's now in Congress parading around because the media just loves her, talking about one program that is dumber than the last program that is dumber than the program before that. So I would admonish your viewers, if she thinks Stephen Miller is a white nationalist, borderline Nazi, chances are he's probably a great guy, simply yeah. because the person that hates him likes things that are so crazy. Unlike her, I like a steak once in a while. My wife is a fantastic cook. Mm -hmm. We get the best steaks at Costco, and she makes the best steak I've ever had. AOC says I'm not allowed to do that anymore. And nope. there will be no cows, and there will be no planes, and there will be no trucks, and there will be no cars, and there will be no factories, and no houses can be heated with fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. Literally, we will go back to the Stone Age. Please, Brooklyn, just like Detroit, just like Minnesota, can you please pick somebody smarter and more ethical than her in November 2020?